was a sweetest name I look up Thou hast made the heavens and the earth By Thy great power I look up Thou hast made the heavens and the earth By Thine outstretched hands oh, Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come
finished. Open your mouth wide and Jehovah will fill it with good things. You will not ask again at the end. You will not ask again after Thanksgiving. Now is the time to talk to God. What do you want God to do for you? 
my father my father crown my year 2020 with your uncommon blessings open your mouth talk to god anointing god beyond the skies let your power signs and wonders go let your power situation changing power destiny changing power beyond the skies history rewriting power beyond the skies Signs and wonders, power beyond the skies. Let your power. Onye mo wa me yeranyo, ozo nke ni gwe me. Chine ke me yeranyo.
Biakone 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 Onye nje mono Biakone Mwanda tu onye Biakone Mabusu abu mwa Biakone Otu waka orwa nda Mwanda yukiti okuju omu ya Ama ama nasi amasi Onye nasi unabiago Ufwe nari ya tuwebu Otu waka Mbale, asu biike unamo Onye mbundo onye gede Mbamba chaleku Anya ngelu uamo Oja kuwebi osike Onye nasu nabiado Mbwa nari ya tuwebu Oja nabo sara Ono kache namo Kene Bia kene Bia kene Talk to him. Round up your prayers. For he has done great things. Softly, softly. Only the praise team. He has done great things. For he has done great things. We praise. His holy name And this year he will do Great things This year he will do Great things This year he will do Great things, that's why we praise His holy name. May Jehovah answer you by fire. May the Lord visit you with a transforming visitation. May October be your month of manifestation. Receive grace. Grace greater than ever before you had seen and known. Grace to recover everything the enemy had stolen. Anything you lost because of the lockdown. Anything the enemy had sought to subvert, divert or prevent you. From receiving from God this year 2020. Receive grace that draws into speedy and perfect manifestation. Accelerated performance. Jehovah's every will and plan and purpose for your life. That you didn't receive in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. September may they this month of October the month of November and December come upon you as a deluge come upon you as a deluge I call into manifestation Jehovah's plans for you he whose thoughts for you are thoughts for good only not evil to bring you an expected end and the future you could only have hoped for i call his plans for you and yours into manifestation so that there shall be no carry over there shall be no carry over there shall be no carry over reign of blessings reign of favor reign of success reign of open heavens reign of breakthroughs in the name of jesus every enemy that had hindered prevented 
delayed subverted your blessings in the first nine months of this year they are bound they are terminated their places and their works shall no more be seen and heard in your life or around you in jesus mighty name by the key of the house of david i open unto you prophetic doors release unto you prophetic helping hands and release you into the manifestation of jehovah's highest and best miracles blessings for your life your family your destiny even blessings that eyes have not seen ears have not heard and no one's imagination ever encompassed in jesus mighty name i will release angelic hosts for immediate manifestation possess your possessions crowning blessings of god shall mark every step of your path till all your paths drop with the fatness of the blessings of jehovah this day forward in jesus mighty name in the mighty name of jesus if your amen is the loudest may your miracles and testimonies be the greatest in jesus mighty name point your finger deliberately to somebody and say i am looking at you but i see everything changing i am looking at you but i'm seeing something else great glory surrounds you the set time to favor you has arrived this year cannot end without god amazing you with incredible blessings if you believe it shout a believing hallelujah if your hallelujah is late in the loudest may your miracles be the biggest I can see and if you shout another hallelujah louder than that you may be seated in the holy spirit Why does God love you people so like this now? The first service didn't have this one. <laughs> they got their own home, but this is your own. Special dose. We have mommy in our midst today. Praise the Lord. I welcome you to the first and our Thanksgiving Sunday in the month of October. Just about 13 weeks, weeks more the year 2020 will come to an end i want to assure you and reassure you the enemy has done his worst but god will always do his best so be assured rest assured that if he created all things created in only six days 12 weeks 13 weeks are far more than enough for him to minister to you everything he had planned to do for you this year 2020 none shall be missing none shall be delayed none shall be carried over in the name of jesus part six of a father's legacy a father is a great asset to any nation any people any family any tribe the great man of god billy graham said a good father is one of the most unsung unpraised unnoticed and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society praise the lord i see great fathers in our midst and great fathers to be rising up amongst us in jesus mighty name we began to look at the duties of a father the responsibilities of a father which accorded us the opportunity to see and discover 
areas in which a father could excel in order to leave a huge godly legacy of eternal blessings unto his generations so we saw that every father must be a teacher the principal teacher in his family among so many other things that the father needs to teach the fear of the Lord is key because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge Proverbs 1 verse 7 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom Psalms 111 verse 10 to teach his family to love God and to love God with a consuming passion because Mark 12 30 says and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy mind with all thy strength this is the first and obviously the principal commandment all or nothing somebody look at your neighbor say all or nothing God wants your all or he wants your nothing praise the Lord make him number one teach your children to do the same we saw several examples of people who did that and we went on to see that God expects every father to teach his children and therefore lead them into the godly legacy of obedience to and walking in God's will at all times to teach them to love and respect women by loving especially and showing respect first to their mom and then all to all women around them then to teach them respect and honor for the elderly and the great hair gray head and to defend the weak and the destitute every father must teach his family every father is expected of god to be a provider for first timothy 5 verse 8 states but if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel so within his capacities and capabilities he should provide make a plan for the future of his family and orchestrate the assets available to him to make sure his family has the best they can have and certainly that they have a vision of godliness and a glorious future that they can walk to to be the protector of his family especially spiritually watching over them being the strong man of the house and making sure especially from a spiritual point of view that you deal with issues that would have handicapped your generations i repeat this if you are a father especially in a commission such as this where we teach on deep spiritual things there are battles you need to fight now so that your children will not need to fight them in future if you notice that there are altars there are principalities and powers there are ancient covenants and dedications that lay a claim over your family that the scepter or rod of wickedness is resting over the portion jehovah has allotted to your family and your generations it is your responsibility to do everything within your power to make sure that those altars are dealt with that those coverings cast are eliminated that the rod of wickedness that had rested over your family and the satanic strong man that had ruled over your father's house that they are bound banished and cast out and broken of your family so that your children when in their own time they arise will not need to pray backward prayer their prayers will be forward prayers not father i bind i break ancient altars 10 generations 20 generations before i was born but oh god give me america give me new zealand give me australia make me a voice in my field am i talking to somebody here let their prayers will be forward prayers rather than backward prayers it is a father's responsibility to do the due diligence and be the protector of his generation and provide that launching pad so that they can spring and go higher than you were ever able to go 
give them a godly foundation every father needs to know he must be a disciplinarian it's not a case of what you want to do or not this is because proverbs 13 verse 24 says that he that spareth his rod hateth his son but whomsoever loveth loves his son does what chasteneth him betimes sometimes it's necessary to discipline a child according to Proverbs 13 24 even though it hurts you as a parent why is it necessary Proverbs 22 15 foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but the rod of correction shall drive it away from him and anybody that does not discipline his son hates him in fact on this discipline issue the bible says that if you are not disciplined in the family you're born into you are a bastard you are not part of that family so we came to encourage young people and we still do never despise the discipline of a father your response to that discipline discipline is key because if you reject it if you are not receptive to it if you are if you don't allow yourself to be corrected and instead become exasperated or hardened in your ways you will miss the benefit of that discipline because the bible says that no chastening hebrews 12 verse 11 no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterwards not now afterwards it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby and the amount of fruit you will take delivery of in the discipline that your parents especially a father will have to meet will be determined by the attitude with which you receive it so make sure the attitude is a great attitude some people need to again imbibe this culture of saying thank you after you've been flogged praise the lord i know some young people don't like that kind of language but i remember that when my father would flog me he would require it of you at some stage not only to apologize for what you've done wrong but if it were possible to say thank you you would say that praise the lord beware of making a discordant sound in the area of discipline one parent is coddling the other one is disciplining wrong signal the father is a pattern why because ephesians 5 verse 1 says be imitators of god copy him and follow his example as well beloved children imitate their father children love mommy but imitate daddy and we pointed out that the father is the priest of the home and therefore should make sure continually he brings his family before the lord that the altar of god in his home the fire never goes down on the altar every father should remember you are a progenitor whether you are still a boy growing a teen or a youth a young man you are a progenitor you are a source you are a beginning of a new tribe and proverbs 11 3 says that the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do so every father needs to brand his tribe for jesus in the examples you show them brand them for jesus in the lifestyle you live make sure you don't compromise them from the foundations there are many who will be in sexual recklessness in their youth there are many who will live a licentious and wayward life in their youth without knowledge but not you not you hearing me not you watching me on television why because you must be generation minded tribe minded your sexual gateways are not for games they are the spiritual access ways whereby a holy seed comes into the earth for the seed as a sperm starts its journey in the man passes under the ark of circumcision and therefore becomes covenant seed enters into the woman and there is fertilization comes for through the woman's birth canal into the earth brother sister your birth canals are spiritual gateways of entry for a tribe into the earth 
don't compromise them by recklessly involving and utilizing your sexual organs in acts that bring about spiritual contamination and consequences even on generations yet unborn you know too much to make that mistake it is not as simple as having a girlfriend it's not as simple as making love those are sweet words that cover sin that will blight transgenerationally when you have a generational mindset when you understand you must bride brand your tribe right there are things that you just won't do again because you are not a profane person and you understand the spiritual import of what others trivialize joke about and play around with this took us into a lot of things you must be uniquely different you must understand that you can't do what everybody else did you must set godly and very strong dramatic examples for your generations because there are drastic things and they are in drastic times drastic things demanding their attention if your examples are not dramatic and therefore ingrain themselves on their memories they will miss it they will miss it brand your generations for jesus in jesus mighty name please go back get the earlier tapes and watch them my generations shall praise the lord that should be your battle cry that should be why you can say to the young man that says lie with me no i will not unless you are my husband no way that's why you like joseph will be able to say to potiphar's wife madame you are too expensive i cannot afford you enough of the revision let's move forward reviewing and talking as we go please look at proverbs 4 from verse 1 hear ye children the instructions of a father the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding for i give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law this is a father speaking to a son this is god the father speaking to us this is me our spiritual father speaking to you for i was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also he did what he taught me and said unto me let thine heart retain my words keep my commandments and live get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth for you to be able to teach your own and every father must be a teacher it is incumbent on the children to draw near to daddy too many children have a flighty mentality as they grow older those that used to be close to daddy and mommy artificial distance begins to manifest itself you need to do something active to deal with that distance am i communicating with somebody here verse 5 says get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth forsake her not and she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee wisdom is a principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding exalt her she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee hear O my son and receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many whatever spiritual law is true in the positive reverse it it will still be true my son if you don't hear if you're stubborn and block your ears and you don't listen to my godly sayings and teachings it is possible that you will be abbreviating or cutting short your life it is possible that you will miss the wisdom that would have prolonged your life verse 11 of that proverbs 4 i have taught thee in the way of wisdom i have led thee in right paths when thou goest thy steps shall not be straightened now the word straightened is old english for narrowed and constricted and when thou runnest thou shalt not stumble in other words if you listen to the advice your father gives you if you sit at his feet and 
take delivery of wisdom that is a product not only of academic qualification your father might be a phd wonderful a professor fantastic all that is good but most importantly he has the mileage of years he is 45 years old 55 years old 70 years old there is wisdom he accumulated over years that the phd you have gotten at 25 will not give you Am I talking to somebody here? So that PhD is excellent, encouraged, but you have a responsibility as a wild, wise child to sit at his feet, take delivery of the knowledge that is a product of experience. When you add your PhD to it, you'll be standing on the shoulder of giants and you'll be seeing much further than your contemporaries. Am I talking to somebody here? If you're blessed with a godly father figure, exploit what God has given you. There is a treasure in that earthen vessel. Praise the Lord. So he says, I've taught thee in the way of wisdom. I've led thee in the right path. Verse 12. When thou goest into life, go into your business, go to set up your own family. When you go forth into the marketplace, when you go to the nations of the world, what I have taught you that you've learned sitting at my feet will make sure your steps are not constrained. You have a liberty that others might lack. And when thou runnest, you will not stumble because I have warned you and pre-warned you about certain things that tripped up great men before you so you know what to look out for there are things you learn sitting at the dining table sitting at daddy's feet that will give you wisdom on common Solomon's wisdom was not only the incredible grace that God gave him but the additional fact that his father crowned him king while he was alive so there were thro two thrones in in Israel Solomon sitting upright on one and King David lying beside him on another one like a couch so the agreement of father and son the wisdom of father with the incredible grace of God upon the son Solomon became incredibly successful am I talking to somebody here never disdain what God has planted in a father figure for you read through proverbs 4 right down to 27 very rich about the teachings of what to gain from a father figure and indeed from your mother figure your parents in general dads are teachers mentors and coach and in deuteronomy 6 verse 6 we saw that you teach at all times in every setting for we found in Deuteronomy 6 verse 6 on to verse 9 that the father teaches when he's seated he teaches when he's walking he teaches when he lies down he teaches when he rises up at all times in every circumstance so the wise child that is close to daddy will always have lessons to learn even from daddy's failures daddy's mistakes daddy's friends casual conversation be close to your father make it a choice so to be and the father who's a coach will stretch you because a coach sees in you what you don't yet see in yourself he sees capacity you have not yet begun to exploit so he will not allow you remain in your comfort zone he will challenge you. He will push you. If your attitude is bad, you will say, why is this man always disturbing me? It's because he sees more in you than you already know that you have in you. And if you yield and you begin to submit yourself with this mindset, daddy only and can only want good for me. So you pay attention to what he's saying to you. You will begin to discover capabilities and capacities in you that you didn't know were there when a coach pushes the athlete to go running by 5 a.m for one hour to skip ropes for 30 minutes to get into a ring and punch and fight another man for one hour every single day when others are still sleeping he's going through this that's why that man will enter the boxing ring one day three years later and become the champion in his belt category am i talking to somebody here a coach pushes you to go beyond your comfort zone that is what will bring out the champion that is in you your father should be your coach your mentor expect 
him to stretch you. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 verse 6. It is every father's responsibility, even if at times today the child doesn't feel like collaborating. Unfortunately, when a father is alienated, obstructed from making his contribution in the family, maybe because there's a separation in marriage between father and mother, which sometimes happens, and sometimes women make it difficult for the father to still have access to the children. That's an error. Even if it didn't work between you and your husband, but he's a responsible man and wants to give his godly input into the lives of the children, do not stop it. That's why in American law of divorce and so on, they will still give if the father is a good man and shows that he is so. They will give him rights of visitation so that the father's input will not be totally denied. Some people unfortunately didn't meet daddy at all. He had passed on before they started, uh, they, before they grew up, they never knew him or they, he passed on too early. That's why God has set you in a church family. You will find a surrogate father. Prayerfully ask. And God will show you the way and whom. And I've already told you the methods of how to do it. But where fathers are not available for some reason. And can't make their godly contribution to the upbringing of the children. There are deep and painful spiritual consequences. Malachi states in chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 Malachi 4 5 and 6 behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse what this scripture is saying is that where there is a division, where there is a separation, where the influence of a father is absent, there is a loophole that the demonic can exploit by injecting curses. Something will go wrong, most probably. And I want to say, I celebrate and bless single mothers widows people who had the child out of wedlock adopted a child or their husbands died prematurely like we've said or something of the sort and for some reason the father figure is not available so many women have done a wonderful job but you need to recognize wonderful a mother as you are there is something that a father needs to input into the life of every child if there is no father to input it something will be missing so please help your child locate that figure father figure it might be your own biological father mama it might be your brother it might be a good solid christian colleague in the office it might be your pastor in the church am i communicating Point your children to that person and let that person speak into their lives. Counsel them. Be available, sir, I need advice. And they call for that advice. Say the prayer a father says. Pronounce a fatherly blessing over them from time to time. Don't let the gap of a father exist in the upbringing of your child. There could be serious spiritual consequences. And if the father is there, he might not be the best and most knowledgeable. But teach them, the children, how to pull blessings out of their father. We saw that in Genesis 27. We saw Rachel or Rebecca go to the son and say, Your father is about to upset God's order. God said the elder shall serve the younger. That means your brother Esau, you're supposed to be the one above him. You have the birthright now. But what your father is set to do now will turn over the entire spiritual clock. 
because he is father and his blessings are so powerful that God will honor them if he does what he's planning to do what God had set as agenda will be overturned am I communicating so what did she say take venison come your father is about to pour out a blessing let it be poured on you or else if he pours it on your senior brother he will upset what God has planned and when Esau, when Jacob comes the methodology is not what I'm looking at the spiritual import is what I'm talking about am I communicating when Jacob came knelt with subterfuge and was blessed instead of Esau the blessing of the father upon him thinking he was blessing Esau was let your brothers serve you let your first almost the first thing he pronounced let your brother serve you the one that will not serve you let him be destroyed had he pronounced that blessing on Esau it would have destroyed Jacob am I communicating with anybody here it would have prevented Jacob being what God had prophesied when he was in the womb the elder shall serve the younger it was the mother that taught him how to provoke a blessing out of the father mothers when last did you even understand the need to teach your children how to provoke a blessing from daddy i gave you examples of one or two things i was able to do as a child my first vacation job the matchet i bought for my father not because he needed it i never saw him use it but it was something that meant something to him and he had lost one at the war during the civil war i bought one and replaced for him i bought a wrapper for my mom first monies i ever earned as a secondary school student and provoked blessings out of them but what was the origin of that understanding they weren't they didn't teach me from the bible as i'm teaching you today but in those days if i go shopping with mama my mom she will say okay take this money go and buy that meat pie tell them to give you three so that we'll eat with daddy when we get home or four or five you will take it and pay and when you come home she's unpacking the things in the kitchen she'll call you and give you the things and say oh yeah put it in a saucer take it to daddy and tell him this is what you bought for him when we went shopping that was the teaching that was how it started mama without knowing it or just because that was what she was taught as well began to transfer that knowledge and you see it is good that mama bought meat pie for her husband but there's a special ass he knows that you don't have any money he knows that it's his wife that gave you the money your mother but you said daddy i bought this for you when we went to the shop that's the beginning you're teaching the child and you're provoking something from the father and the smile the joy on daddy's face the boy learns that giving something to daddy makes daddy happy so every opportunity he has he provokes daddy's blessings again provokes them again provokes them again provokes them again children i encourage you learn it today if you've never heard it before young people learn it today if you've never done it before make it a point of duty give something to your children in our house one of our kids not because she has too much money has made it a point of duty every month the other day because there was a change in job and i knew that it was a tight time for her for a month i didn't say anything to her i paid the bills for two months she called me i said daddy you have not been sent telling me when it's time to renew your dstv what's going on i said i knew you were changing a job so this is not the time I said no daddy that's my covenant obligation is it because DSTV I can't pay for it I was paying for it before she was born am I talking to somebody here but hey that fact that it is your child that did it teach the children how to provoke blessings out of their father it is a mother's responsibility and children excitedly determinedly and definitely make sure your relationship with your father is tight don't let age fool you tv is now in your room you don't have time for anybody 
one of the greatest lessons I learned, I learned it late in life. I had already become a rebel and become a tear away. And I say this to you, truth about me. I had friends. And two of my closest friends, about the time I was finishing secondary school, had a very bad relationship with their own fathers. And I gave my father a lot of heat at one time. I did. But a stage came in my life when I had to sit down and ask, what is causing this problem between you and your daddy? And I couldn't find anything because my daddy was a good man. Who hasn't made mistakes? He had. So had I. But he was a good man and what I was doing was not right. It was uncalled for and inappropriate. So I had to tell myself the truth. I had to discover without being educated by anybody. But self-analysis, I discovered. I was importing the bad relationships from my two friends and extrapolating it to my own father. The stories about how they were relating to their own fathers made me relate to my own father. That same way, I was a rebel without a cause. Many young people are exactly that. Following ungodly examples. Treating their fathers, their mothers with disrespect because you read it on Facebook. Your friends are like that with their own. These old men are always troublesome. You sit in that council, you hear them talking. My, oh, that old man today give wahala. And when you go home, you go home with attitude of that old man today. Your own dad know they give wahala. But you treat him like a dad that gives wahala. Many of us imported reflected aggression against our parents without knowing where it was coming from some of you need to reanalyze did your dad deserve what you did to him how you treated him how you've ignored him or your mom sit down and think praise the living god and my dad said to me you did not pick me to be your father i did not pick you to be my son when my wife was pregnant, she could have had the baby girls. A baby girl. It was God that picked us for each other. But, now that we have found ourselves father and son, we must take a decision whether this relationship will be sweet. And if we decide that we want it to be sweet, it will not make itself sweet. Both of us must impute into it. Work hard to make it sweet relationships are built they don't just come like that whether it is a matrimonial relationship or a father-son relationship you build it you invest in it a time came when i had to make a decision that this relationship that was sour between myself and my father should would not continue that way and grace spoke for me because i can't say i wasn't a church-going person but I realized my father would drink tea every morning. After, immediately after morning devotion, which was very brief, he would call for his morning, he would have this morning tea to be set up for him. And something happened. When my father sits down to take his tea, I'll now go to him and say, Daddy, may I have tea with you? And I sit down with my father. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we share tea and share biscuits and share information and share love and share intimacy in the morning and I began to learn and the relationship began to be sweet it wasn't exciting the first time there was tension it was like oh, what has he come for make I look unwell he was examining me I was examining him hey but gradually he began to look forward to it when I don't come quickly he said oh become let's drink tea and gradually those minutes 30 20 minutes every morning became times i looked forward to it was from there that it grew that when i moved to my house no matter where i traveled to anytime i come back into enugu 11 in the night i'll enter my father's house first greet my father and mother if i brought anything for them i'll drop them before i go back to my house it grew from that i started investing in the relationship and it started becoming sweet young people learn to invest and those of us who've made mistakes go back 
reinvest it's not too late once in a while call papa on phone once in a while tell papa i'm sending you airtime once in a while tell daddy somebody is coming to the village i gave him something for you what is it don't worry when he comes you'll be surprised that is what relationships are made of am i talking to somebody here build the relationship many will unfortunately wait until it's too late and their father figure's gone and you will regret it at that time may it not be your portion and mine in jesus mighty name those who've already made that mistake god might still give you the opportunity either to fix it with your own children or with another father figure that mentors you but john maxwell said this and John Maxwell is the world's premier leadership teacher. Leadership in every area of life, family, business, etc. If somebody's mentoring you, if somebody's speaking into your life, there are certain things you need to do to show that you are a good mentee and to maximize the benefits you derive from that relationship, even if it is with your own biological father one of them is this learn to ask questions learn questions are ice breakers questions are door openers the questions that apostle peter asked made it possible for so many of us to learn so much about who god is the question that john asked made it possible for john the beloved to be the only one who knew ahead of time who was going to be, be betray jesus none of the other disciples knew but he asked the master who is it that will betray you and jesus said you see this bread i'm holding i'm going to dip it in stew anybody i give this to is the one that will betray me he dipped it he said judas 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 better man take judas put out his hand rejoice that he was one jesus was giving to but jesus was passing a message that only john understood there are things deep in the heart of your father that casual conversation will not bring out you will need to sit down with him there are compounds you should not enter in your village there are people you cannot relate to in your village and you don't know who they are during the civil war it was my father that told me indiana pansy hello somebody you know what that means this family is known for poisoning people as a child during the war we were not afraid in those days no kidnapping and things like that as soon as they you finish taking your morning bath finish doing your chores you jump out to play you go from this compound to that compound but because of that parental grace that i had sitting down at my father's feet i knew whose house not to go to children of today go back to your village do you know anybody when they carry you go here carry you go there because you never sat down at daddy's feet this is telling you these people are known daddy what do you mean by it ah they said that in days of old he used to put it in his finger when you're drinking with him and his hand passes over your cup he has dropped the thing into your drink there were there are they know their own village why are you looking at me like that <laughs> hallelujah joe praise the lord <laughs> amen but you see these are things you learn from sitting at daddy's feet they, they will, you never you never learn it in university praise the living god so how do you ask questions what do you do what's the importance of asking questions when somebody is pouring into your life ask questions john maxwell said that one of the people he mentored that was such a blessing to him he enjoyed mentoring him this young man had this habit every time he meets with him the young man will say to him sir the last time we met i asked you these following questions this 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 and this is what you said to me so he now understands the young man understood what he was telling him and if he didn't he corrects him then he tells him with the information i i got from that conversation with you i was able to do this and do this and do this relevant application very good he can now give him more advice then the young man would end up with saying sir i have some more questions can i ask so he always looked forward to his meetings with a young man 
people especially people who have something upstairs rejoice when they see people who are hungry to learn by sitting down at their feet humbling themselves am i talking to somebody here so many of us think we are too bright too brilliant and we don't have time to sit at daddy's feet may they not be gone before you recognize what you had lost for them and hey there are kids that might not get this but i tell you counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water in a well but a man of understanding will do what draw it out with patience and labor you need to draw out some information from the depths of your father's heart there are some things he won't want to talk to you about because he still sees you as a child but the kind of question you ask him will show you you're not show him you're not a child and he'll begin to open up and tell you things that you didn't expect it takes a wise child to get that kind of stuff out of his father and it will be a terrible thing for a father who has grace and knowledge that should bless his children appointed by god which is why he brought you into his family as his child but because you were not humble enough to sit down ask the questions build a relationship and draw out information out of your father somebody else a house boy somebody else a neighbor's son somebody else your cousin somebody else draws near to your father he humbles himself sits at your father's feet asks your father the questions that should have been you asking and your father pours out on him what god had put in him for you the last son can be the wisest in the family because he sat down at daddy's feet am i talking to somebody here unfortunately in my hometown now i know something but i don't know much but i have a first cousin and i thank god for uche anything i need to get done in my village i talk with uche because uche interacted so closely with his father and my uncle Horatius knew my hometown inside out. So anything I need to do that has to do with home, I call Uche first. And we talk and we agree on what needs to be done. None of his brothers has that grace yet. But that grace could have been on a last born if he had been the one that sat at his father's feet. There is something you can get out of your father by patience and sitting at his feet and listening to him. Don't be a rebel without a cause. The rewards of sitting at a father's feet, relating with a father figure intimately, they are incredible. And the losses of not doing so are also bad. You need to provoke blessings out of your father. When I was in business, my mentor in business, his father, I knew to be my father's best friend. A man that had five wives and maybe 50 or so, almost 50 children. But his first son, his first son, his first son took, took good care of his father, took good care of his mother. He made it financially and he would sit at his, father feet, his father's feet and listen. He would seek his father's advice on things. He would bless his father, make sure he kept his father supplied with the best cars he could buy for him, good drivers, made provision for all his... His father just had to mention what was his need. And this young man took it up. I remember, actually... I, his, his, his mother the young man's mother was a second wife to die the first wife that died was a second wife when she passed on there was a meeting I was present at the meeting and they were discussing money to bury this woman and the whole family many of them doing very well everybody said I don't have money everybody said I don't have money the argument was becoming heated when they were saying you will bring 10,000 you will, your, your assignment is 5,000 some people were trying to get out of the 10,000 and bring themselves down to 5,000 and the, this I was present this young man saw his father shrinking he fell back 
bad. This is a man that had money a long time ago, lent Nigerian government half a million pounds when they built Niger Bridge in the days when a car was 400 pounds. He lent Nigerian government half a million pounds. He saw this man shrinking and lamenting. Is it because things are like this now in my old age? And he stood up and said, this meeting is over. Why? Papa, wrap back. Everything you require for the funeral, give me the bill. I'll settle it. I knew him close enough at that time to know he didn't have money. We got back to Abba from that trip. He went to the bank and borrowed money. I went with him. Borrowed money from the bank and gave his father to bury his wife to make sure his father didn't have the sorrow. Wiped his father's shame. No wonder I saw with my two eyes. This man had reached a stage when he doesn't sleep much at night. When he wakes up by 2 a.m. in the morning, he sits up and begins to count those who offended him. He will say, oh, Chukwo, I hand them over to you. Those who did bad, he will, he'll till morning, till 7, 6, 7 a.m. He's talking. He's not a church-going man, but that is prayer. Every night, because by 1, 2, he doesn't sleep again. But when he comes, he mentions his children one by one, those who have challenges. Lord, Chukuna, I hand them over to you. You hear him talking. But when he comes to Leonard, 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 we will call his name a hundred times. Leonard, Chukuna, Gozierume. And he will keep saying, This is a man, I've never seen him in church. But till morning, it is Leonard, Chukuna, Gozierume. And the young man was flying. The young man was flying. Likewise, if you make your father cry every time he remembers you, there is no way it can be profitable for you. The Bible says those who are to give account concerning you. Hebrews 13 verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that what the giving account of you with grief is unprofitable for you there are many children when their fathers remember them ah! even in my room your own child will do to you what you did to me and that is a prayer of your father for you and he's praying it with pain in your heart oh boy go and diffuse that tension that fire will burn you am I talking to somebody here go and settle that issue you won't be able to carry the load it will bring on you the man of God I got born again under Archbishop Nick Duncan Williams of Ghana I heard him testify that his sisters gave their mother so much heat. And every time she would lay hands on her tummy and say, I bore you in my womb and you're treating me like this. Don't worry, you will see. Don't worry, you will see. That don't worry, you will see is all she kept saying. But he said he was in England. One of his sisters was married to a British, was married and settled in Britain. And she was due to deliver and the doctor said we don't understand what is holding your baby but the baby is not coming and we are in, not in a position to operate you will not survive a cesarean section we don't know what is wrong but certainly something is wrong and the lady was crying in pains and the doctor said this case is very bad and he called the sister said do you see, remember sister mama kept saying you will see you will see please call mama at that point in time she was desperate now and mercy of god one dial they connected gamma Accra. mama answered and the woman with tears in her eyes cried and began apologizing to mama for what she did as a little girl mama cried in ghana and prayed for her and blessed her mama was still speaking the baby came mama was still speaking what was holding the baby was broken this one is not you can have a phd she would have died with a phd on that doctor's table there are things you can't afford in your life and make sure that one of them is not the grief in his heart of a father towards you mothers turn the hearts of your children back to their fathers 
I don't care. He might be a bad man. Don't, don't carry your problem with the man and use it to mess up the life of your children. A young lady I know in this town had a problem with her husband or has been having some challenges with her husband. And her children had grown. One of them called and said, Mama, I'll buy you this car, do this for you, and I'm going to send you for holiday from this country to this country to that country. The woman was saying, very good. I like that. But you finish your education completely. Yes, you're doing well, but finish your education with. And by the way, what of your father? I said, no, no, not him. The mother said, then count me out. No holiday, no car, nothing I don't want. The boy said, Mama, why? said, anything you are giving that you're not giving to your father too, I don't want. Why now? I know how Papa treated you. I know how Papa behaved towards us. I know. The woman said, have, I, have you heard what I said? Mom, if that blessing does not include your father, I don't want it. That's a wise woman. That's a wise woman. She didn't allow the challenges she had with her husband to bring the children to a place where they enter into spiritual consequences because they love mama some short-sighted ones will say eh, mom, he, eh, does he deserve it eh, give it to me it's only me after all, i'm the only one that loves you was he ever there and that you finish that child you've entered that child into spiritual bese for the rest of their lives Mothers teach children to provoke blessings out of their fathers. Teach them to take delivery of what God has placed in their fathers for them. Mothers know your role in bridging that gap. In bonding the family together. A family I know and love very dearly. Something arose that necessitated the mother moving and traveling outside the country and while she was there other things came up that prolonged the journey that should have been a six months or three months trip it became one year two years three years I began to see the cracks I had occasion to talk with both of them one occasion when she came back to Nigeria and I pleaded whatever is keeping you outside this country please come back you are at a very delicate stage of the raising of this beautiful family God has blessed you people with your children are coming into maturity and independence and getting ideas of their own and beginning to feel they have a little shoulder pad and wings so they're beginning to butt heads with their father their father is strong-willed they are strong-willed where you here as a mother you have the finesse to even out the tension and bring them to a meeting of minds because a mother is a bond maker a, home, a house build it anywhere you like banana island without a wife inside that place it is a house it takes a wife to turn it into a home am i talking to somebody here I told her your absence is allowing the festering of emotions that are dangerous in this family. And it will get worse with time because the children are entering into that age bracket. Please, whatever is keeping you, let it go. It is not as important as what is happening. I'll tidy up. I'll come back soon. It didn't happen as she expected. And the gap continued long and short of it. <clears throat> then broke the family. The thing did damage, serious damage to the entire family. Damage that has not yet been restored fully till today. I know of another one. I will look after my children. They will need to school. So she left her husband, followed the children, stayed with the children, trained the children. The children did very well. Her marriage packed up now the children are suffering and crying and hurt because daddy and mommy are separated that gap was ostensibly for the purpose of raising the children the presence of mother and father especially that word in malachi 3 uh, or 4 turn the heart of the uh, children back to their fathers and the heart of the fathers back to their children it is a mother in a family that is specially graced to do it 
and I pray don't be a liaison because those that don't understand they will hear from daddy and talk to the children talk to the children and tell daddy so they're in the bridge and that becomes their place of importance but that is not your place your place is to bring everybody together am I talking to somebody here and be the bonding fast factor in the family and not to be a go between praise the living God I encourage everyone under the sound of my voice you're a wife please treasure your husband we're talking of the legacies of a father I have said earlier that a wife can sabotage a father's legacy treasure your husband he might not be the best he might not be a wonderful person but treasure him give him your very best and I can't celebrate enough women who do this you make sacrifices you pay a tremendous price but the price you are paying will bring eternal blessings to your entire family recently I have an I had an extraordinary example of a woman that places capital value on her husband I had known certain problems these two people had at one time I'd heard about them and they sorted them out I don't know to what extent they had sorted them out but something happened the young man became COVID positive during this lockdown and it was very bad because it was not discovered early his kidneys had gone into failure he had already gone it through dialysis a number of times before they finally diagnosed he was covid 19 positive so he would be moved they discovered this on i think saturday and he would be moved to isolation center by monday in the hospital where he was he was separated and segregated the wife's test was done because she had always been there with him the brother who had been there with him also they tested him as well both of them came out negative eventually but when the test results were still awaited I was liaising with them and we were all praying and I advised on what they had to do from time to time and just gave them encouragement so when I said something about uh, the wife needs to do this she wasn't around that day I was telling the brother the wife needs to do this do this do this I said ah <laughs> it won't work. I said, why? I said, because she's praying that she should also be tested positive, that her test result will be positive. I said, why? How can she be praying that her test result will be positive? I said, because she said that her husband cannot go into isolation alone, that she wants to go with him to be able to look after him there. I said, I, I said, yes, the girl is praying that her test result, which will not come until that Monday, will be positive so that she can follow him into isolation to look after him. When the test result came out, she was negative. On Monday, when they were moving him into isolation, she said, I'm going with him. They could not do anything. They couldn't move him without moving her. So she moved into isolation with him. Am I talking to somebody here? stayed with him in the place where all the covid people are and she came out still covid negative but the day i talked to the boy on phone when he was now recovering and discharged i said to him oh boy you see this your wife god give you gold handle with care i know women who would have said my two children let me look after them he will go he will come but this one said children let my friends and relations and my mother and others look after the children but let me follow my husband this one is my own that mentality is rare and it's the mentality that brings out the best in a man i don't care what problems and challenges they might have had before everybody has challenges in their own marriages but i something tells me that something did a massive u-turn in their relationship after that praise the living god has anybody learned anything children of god i encourage you provoke out of your parents young people the best that they have in them for you somebody an anonymous wise person said this it is a wise father who knows his child but maybe it is a very wise child 
who takes time to know his father i can't go further in this service i think our praise and worship took some of our time which is also very good when you get home go to facebook and there are a few things i said here i will also review them by the next time i come to teach it's obvious that what i thought would end today is not going to end today has anybody gained anything let's rise on our feet